we record these messages and they're available on YouTube and Facebook and we send them out via email and you can find every message on our website which is www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com www.backtobasicsinc.com and the messages are blessing a lot of people. You may say, well, what is the online church and why is it important? And, and then you may say, well, is, is this a, a different? Is this a, a contrary to the regular church? No, we are part of the body of Christ. We're the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and God has people who attend the regular church services in a meeting place, a lot of people call this the brick and mortar church. There's a fellowship building where you attend and um, you go to your regular services and worship God and that's where a part of the body of Christ meets. But you know, uh, in these last days there are a lot of people who do not attend church fellowships or brick and mortar churches and many stay home, many are hurting, many there are a number of people who cannot attend a church Many people who uh, cannot drive to church, they, uh, many people uh, live in areas where there are no churches, and so the Lord blessed us to organize this online church to reach people who do not regularly attend fellowship, and <laughs> also many people who watch our videos do attend regular services and get strengthened by the messages that we present on the online church. This is a good opportunity for the sick and the shut-ins, uh, people in nursing homes, people who cannot get out of bed, uh, uh, the people who are pris in prison, incarcerated. These are great opportunities to reach them with the gospel. The online church can go where a lot of people cannot go. This, this online church goes to places where I cannot go. And I thank God that God has uh, so made it possible that we can use the internet and technology to reach people with his love and with the gospel. And so when you hear people criticize the online church and, and they think it's a threat to the regular church, no, these are ignorant people. These are purely ignorant people who do not see the vision that God has given to a lot of people. You see, Jesus said, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation. And so that is what we're doing. We're reaching more nations now than we could when we were part of the, the, the brick and mortar church. We're reaching nations. We're helping to build a church in Kenya. We're uh, expanding the the school of ministry into many nations and people are being blessed and we give God the glory, the honor and the praise. We couldn't do this, ladies and gentlemen, without the Holy Spirit opening doors for us to go beyond, beyond the horizons. We call the online church the new frontier. It's the new frontier. It's using technology to preach the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, so you're going to hear critics and, and people who are skeptical and, and are afraid, but pray that they get the vision. Pray that people get the vision. Pray that people see what Jesus meant in, in Matthew 16, 18. Pray that they get the vision that when he said, go ye into all the world, uh, pray um, that they see the Great Commission and go into the whole world. Jesus said, on this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And so we want to thank you for being a part of the online church. I want to thank you for encouraging me in this work. Thank my precious wife, Jackie. Jackie uh, attends uh, the fellowship in, in Atlanta every Sunday where she's instrumental in helping to uh, spread the gospel and the great work there. And I appreciate her. And I know there are times she wants to be with us here on the online church, but Jackie cannot be in two places at one time. And so uh, she's doing the best she can where she is. And then she joins us on uh, Wednesday night fellowships and uh, uh, the Bible study. And, and soon when we 
begin the uh, second service on the online church. We're not starting today, but later this year we will start a second online church service on Sundays at 7 o'clock p.m. She'll be instrumental in that. And so uh, we just bless God and thank God. I thank God for you all and for you coming on and for your families gathered around your computer or your telephone. And all it takes, all it takes for a person to get blessed is to dial one set of numbers. Just dial the number and, and you're right there with the online church. And so we praise God for what he's doing. We thank God for this great work. And I thank God for you. And we're only, we're only on for one hour. We try to limit <coughs> our service to one hour. I know I get carried away sometimes. But we limit this to one hour so that we can <coughs> worship God, hear some, um, some good gospel music. And we play songs by, from our friend uh, Kevin Wilson. We do not own the rights to his songs, but Kevin has given us his personal permission to play his songs, and we thank God for that. I praise God for Kevin Wilson from London, Kentucky. He's a country guy. He's a country dude, but that, that brother can, can sing some songs, and he's full of the Holy Spirit, and he loves the Lord God. And I remember when I met him in Indiana, Kevin uh, came off the stage and walked down to me where I was sitting and, 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 and gave me some, uh, uh, some of his uh, CDs. And he said, here, Pastor, here's a gift for you. He said, you have my permission to play these songs. And he blessed me, and we blessed each other, and he's my friend, and he's a friend of this ministry, and we support him in the work he's doing. And so we're learning that uh, no, part, no one person can do it by himself or herself it takes a team it takes the body it takes the body of Christ and so we're seeing how many people who are currently uh, enrolled uh, and, and participate in the online church are now branching off into their own ministries we see Terry Chiquito in Colorado we see Karen Herzog in uh, Pennsylvania we see Ryan Trogler in Pennsylvania, we see Sharon Hudson down in Texas. We see we see CK down in Texas, and there are many others. We see Loretta uh, Jackson in uh, Wilmington, Delaware. We see Dr. Gene Bratton in Wilmington, Delaware. We see Pastor Mark Moyer in Lancaster County, who now has his online church service, his own online church service. We see God moving, and we thank God that He has us in a position to help build others up in the ministry. And we look at Pastor Bishop Elijah in, in Kenya as they're uh, raising up a great church in Kenya. And we see many, many others that we're supporting and helping to uh, help, help send them forth. So this is not a selfish ministry. It's a ministry to help build Christ up in others so that you can go and be a blessing to others. Speaking of a blessing to others, we're going to ask our friend uh, Jackie Fisher from Dry Ridge, Texas. Uh, not Texas. I'm sorry, Jackie. Jackie Fisher from Dry Ridge, Kentucky. She's in Kentucky, y'all. And <clears throat> Jackie's going to come and read the scripture for us. We ask you to uh, turn your attention to Hosea. Download Hosea chapter 6 or open your Bible to Hosea chapter 6. And Jackie's going to read the scripture. Then I have a powerful message for you as we launch out into 2020 on the online church. Let's greet Jackie Fisher. Good morning, Pastor Carter. And good, good morning, morning Jackie. God bless you. I'll be reading Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the, the morning. And he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. 
O Ephraim, what shall I do unto thee? O Judah, what shall I do unto thee? For your goodness is as a morning cloud, and as the early dew it goeth away. Therefore have I hewed them by the prophets, I have slain them by the words of my mouth, and my judgments are as the light that goeth forth. For I desired mercy, and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. But they like men have transgressed the covenant. There have they dealt treacherously against me. Gilead is a city of them that work iniquity and is polluted with blood. And as troops of robbers wait for a man, so the company of priests murder in the way by consent, for they commit lewdness. I have seen an horrible thing in the house of Israel. There is the whoredom of Ephraim. Israel is defiled. Also, O Judah, he hath set in harvest for thee, when I returned the captivity of my people. That's the reading of Hosea 6. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie Fisher. Jackie Fisher read the word, and I appreciate her reading, and she reads uh, emphatically, and, and she uh, enunciates, and, and I love her reading. And just well, th I thank you, and I thank Jackie and her precious husband, uh, Russell, and the Fisher household who love the Lord in Dry Ridge, Kentucky. Praise God. We're going to be looking at... Uh, Hosea chapter 6 today as we look at a great message uh, the Lord has prepared and the message is entitled let us return to the Lord let us return to the Lord now don't click off don't go to another station stay right there you may say well I haven't left the Lord well let us return to the Lord because if if, if you're in the body of Christ and you listen to this message you're gonna have the responsibility to help encourage someone else either to get into Jesus Christ or to receive Jesus Christ or to continue what you do with this message is gonna help a lot of people this year and so <clears throat> we want to help a lot of people this year uh, help them to get saved and those who are saved already help them to stay saved to remain saved because these are very difficult times I don't know if our friend Ryan Trogler is on with us today um, Ryan um, if you're on okay I see your name we're gonna ask Ryan Ryan would you come and 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 pray prayer prayer lead us in prayer brother Ryan I, I, I see you now praise God uh, good morning church good morning pastor good morning oh, Heavenly Father we want to thank you for making another day today we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins and for in the Lord this year we want to thank you for making another year for us and we want to we want you to help us strengthen our walk and our talk with you this year Lord and strengthen our march and your word and Lord we want you to uh, bless Pastor Carter with, with give him the knowledge and the wisdom and the courage to teach us your word again today and Lord we want to bless this online ministry and and just everybody around the world we want to bless this nation we want to bless the nation of Israel and we want to bless all of our military that's preparing for a war uh, Lord we just want to say we, we thank you we honor you we love you and praise you in Jesus Christ precious name Amen Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Ryan. And while you're on there, uh, on here with us, we give a shout out to your daughter Jenna on her birthday. I think this is number sixteen for Jenna. Uh, she said thank you, and she's actually fifteen. And don't push it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, happy birthday, Jenna. I'm not gonna push it. Enjoy being fifteen. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Jenna Trogler is 15 today, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, praise God. Bless Ryan and Jenna and, and your precious wife, uh, Tara. Praise God. We're going to get ready now to uh, hear the word and I pray that God will anoint this word and that you will hear it and receive it and that it will bless you and um, the, the message is going to be entitled let us return to the Lord 
I'll be preaching from the sixth chapter of Hosea. But before that, hey, let's go back to um, Kevin Wilson from um, London, Kentucky. Kevin has a song that is going to lead us into this message, and his song is entitled, How Much Grace, How Much Grace. And in this song, he asked the question, what's it going to take to bring you back to me? God is asking the question through the singer, Kevin Wilson, what's it going to take to bring you back to me? That's an appropriate song for our message today. And the message is entitled, uh, Let Us Return Unto the Lord. Enjoy this song. Let's get it here. Burn the candle at both ends. Circumstances have brought you here again. Standing on the edge, just about to fall. One step away from losing it all. Place to hide. How many times had you fallen on your knees and made promises that you didn't keep? Just ask yourself before it's too late. Isn't that a powerful question? Isn't that a powerful question? Hey, you relate that question to yourself. And I relate that question to me. Can, can you see God? Can you see God, ladies and gentlemen, as he pleads with us? How much grace is it going to take to bring you back to me? How much grace is it going to take to bring you back to me? I think God is having a problem with a lot of people. Uh, uh, God is looking for people who are steadfast, unmovable, 
always abounding in the work of the Lord. I believe God is looking for people who are going to stick with him, not just love him on, on, on Sunday morning or, or, or make uh, an appearance in church on Sunday morning. No, no, no. God is looking for more than that. I believe God is looking for people whom he can depend on, who are going to trust him no matter what happens, whether it's raining or snowing, whether there's ice or fire or storm, whether there's trouble or and turmoil and danger. God is looking for some steadfast folks who are going to stick with him. God is looking for people like in the Trugler household and in the, the, the Branham household and in the Carter household and in the Fisher household and in the, uh, the Bias household. <laughs> He's looking for men and women who are going to say, for God I will live and for God I will die. I believe God is looking for people who will say, come hell or high water, I'm going to trust in the Lord. I'm, I believe God is looking for people who are saying, uh, uh, I'm saved by grace through faith, and, and Jesus promised never to leave me. He brought me up out of a horrible pit, and I'm going to stick with Jesus. That's the kind of people God is looking for. He's not looking for flighty, uh, transient uh, people who run hither, thither, and yon and flee when troubles come. And he's not looking for people who call on him and try to pimp him. You know, there are people trying to pimp God. Well, what do you mean, Pastor, trying to pimp God? There are people, they know when to call on God. They know when to pray. When troubles come, they, they can pray. When they're broke, busted, and disgusted, they can pray. And they'll call on you to pray when somebody gets sick in their household. But God is looking for people who have a relationship with his son, Jesus Christ, not somebody whose name is on the church roll and not somebody who uh, 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 is, is uh, politically aligned with the leading political party. No, God is looking for people who put all that aside and say, Jesus Christ is Lord of my life and I'm going to live for Jesus. And, and, and no matter what comes, I'm not going to let anything separate me from the love of God through Jesus Christ. That's what God is looking for. God is looking for serious believers, serious followers. And ladies and gentlemen, I pray, I pray, I pray that in this new year, you'll make a quality decision that nothing is going to separate you from the love of God. I know there are some of you, you drifted away during the past year. And, and many of us, you know, we turned our backs to God on many occasions. But let us repent. Let us repent and let us return unto the Lord. Turn with me to Hosea 6, 1. And once again, I thank Jackie Fisher for reading the scripture. 6, 1 says, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. Verse 2 says, After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3, then shall we know, if we follow on to know the Lord, his going forth is prepared as the morning, and he shall come unto us as the rain, as the latter and former rain unto the earth. And uh, as we continue, I want you to read all of this sixth chapter. And it's a very powerful chapter. If you can, uh, this week, read all of Hosea. Read all of Hosea because it's a powerful verse. Now, let me tell you something about Hosea. His name means salvation. And uh, Hosea was called to prophesy, called to be a prophet. I mean, he didn't, he didn't uh, 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 pr buy a computer or a, 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 la a laptop and get a, a video camera and a headset and decide he's going to uh, check out how many earthquakes are, uh, are, are appearing on the earth and, and, and talk to people about earthquakes and try to relate that to the end times. You know, a lot of people are doing that. People are caught up on earthquakes and tornadoes, and, 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 and people build their whole ministry on talking about earthquakes. Ladies and gentlemen, this gospel is more than earthquakes. And, and when God calls a prophet, God calls a prophet to say what thus saith the Lord. But so many people have this false concept 
of what a prophet ought to be doing. And I see so many people in the body of Christ, they're trying to duplicate what other ministers are doing. Talking about earthquakes and tornadoes. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole lot more to this gospel that people need to hear other than earthquakes. Earth, hearing about earthquakes is all right, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, somebody needs to take a stand about corrupt politics. Somebody needs to take a stand against uh, 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 political corruption uh, from the White House to, to my house uh, and, and to, to, to the, the guest house. Somebody needs to take a stand and, and, and share what the gospel says about uh, dropping bombs on innocent people in foreign countries. Somebody ought to take a stand against assassinating leaders in other countries and, and, and saying uh, we're doing this because uh, they are a threat uh, uh, and, and they're, uh, they're preparing threats against our nation. Ladies and gentlemen, somebody needs to take a stand and stand on the gospel and, and not be political. You know, there are a whole, oh, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of people in the church today. I call them punks in the pulpit. Punks in the pulpit. They are afraid to speak against the atrocities going on by this government. They are afraid to speak of anything that has to do with a certain political party. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm a preacher. I'm called by God to preach the gospel. And I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat. I'm going to preach what thus saith the Lord, not what thus saith of uh, the Speaker of the House, not what thus says the Leader of the Senate, not what thus says the President. I'm going to speak what thus says the Lord, because when the deal comes down, it's going to be what you do with the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Do not be deceived, ladies and gentlemen. Many people in this nation have been deceived. Many people in foreign nations have been deceived. Right now, <clears throat> leaders throughout this nation or trying to spin their lives to defend an assassination against a leader in Iran. Ladies and gentlemen, they are spinning their I mean, they're having meetings to try to justify uh, 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 why they did this and why they did that. And ladies and gentlemen, with the nation, with our nation on the verge of war, on the brink of war, and the threat that many of our young men and women can uh, 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 face death, because of 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 a, of a, of, a, of a crazy leader uh, who 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 many of us know the real deal. Uh, hey, if troubles are happening at home, then you go outside and start some trouble, and then you solidify home. But then everybody's attention is outside. So hey, uh, the one of the best strategies in American history, and presidents have used this over and over again, is when the heat is on them at home in the domestic relations, then you go so outside and you start a war. We did this with the Mexicans in 1846. We did this with the Spanish in 1898. We did this uh, in order to get into World War I. Uh, we, we planted uh, the, the fleet in uh, Pearl Harbor unprotected, uh, uh, and that got us into World War II, and we have justified uh, uh, sending troops into uh, the Mideast. We've justified sending troops years ago into Korea and into Granada and to other places. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived. One thing about the Bible, God is not deceived, nor is he mocked. But if you're going to a church and they're not preaching and the preachers are afraid to speak against these things, then uh, uh, shame on you and shame on the preachers. Preach the gospel, ladies and gentlemen. Preach the gospel. God raised up prophets in the old times to face and confront the atrocities of the leaders, the atrocities of the, the priests, the atrocities of the kings, and one of those persons was Hosea. Hosea, his name means salvation, and he ministered to the northern kingdom of Israel. During the times of these kings, listen, these kings, <coughs> um, there were, there were, and, and he tells us in chapter 1 who these kings were. He says, he began prophesying in the days of Uzziah. Now, Uzziah was the cousin of Isaiah. He was corrupt. He preached during the time of Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah. And Hezekiah uh, was uh, 
he started off on the wrong road, and God gave him a chance, and then Hezekiah got his house cleaned up, and then Hezekiah turned to idolatry again. And then the king in the northern kingdom, when Hosea preached, was Jeroboam. Jeroboam, one of the most corrupt leaders in the history of Israel. Jeroboam was the king who made two golden calves in Ephraim and, and uh, in Samaria and had the people worship two golden calves and led the people of Israel against the Lord. So Hosea was raised up in a time of uh, great corruption where kings defied God, people defied God, they manipulated the people, they deceived the people, and they were responsible, ladies and gentlemen, lead, to lead the people down the wrong road. I hope you'll listen to this message and, 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 and wake up, <clears throat> open your eyes and see what's happening in this nation, ladies and gentlemen. And, um, we, you know, many people in the church are not getting this kind of word. They're, oh, they're, they're happy hearing their little bless me party uh, messages, and these are the events we're going to do this year. We're going to have a, a bazaar in July. Uh, we're going to have a, everybody's birthday party in September. We're going to have a cakewalk. We're going to have fellowship meals, and that's what much of church is all about these days. But God has a word for his people. God wants to save us, ladies and gentlemen. He wants to save us. And, and God is concerned. He's got a concern for the people who have turned their backs to him, who have turned him off. He is concerned about many people in this nation and the nations who have turned their backs against God and don't want to hear any kind of preaching. And then God is concerned because one of the reasons why so many people have turned off from the church and no longer attend the church and no longer participate in the church is they have been listening to the voices of corrupt pastors, corrupt preachers, corrupt leaders. Now, I'm not, I'm not condemning anybody, but I know there are corrupt priests out there, corrupt preachers. Ladies and gentlemen, it broke my heart to read yesterday about the United Methodist Church getting ready to divide into three separate denominations. One, denominations for, one denomination for the gay and, and lesbian community. One denomination for the traditional Methodists. And, and one denomination for everybody else. Three separate denominations. They're going to split, ladies and gentlemen. And the majority of people are going to be in this uh, denomination that caters to Gay and LGBTQ, QT, whatever, uh, that community. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a sin, it's a shame. And God has an answer if people would just get in the Bible. God hates this same-sex marriage. God hates uh, of the gay lifestyle. God hates lesbianism. He does not hate people, but he hates those sins that people commit. And yet you have a, a, the third largest denomination in the United States, the third largest denomination, acting like punks, acting like punks, ladies and gentlemen, acting like punks. They refuse to stand on the word of God. And so they say, we'll separate into three denominations. What a sin and what a shame. What kind of message is that being sent to this nation and to the nation? And so, hey, this is nothing new, ladies and gentlemen. In Hosea's day, in Hosea's day, and listen, listen to this, the nation was enjoying prosperity and growth outwardly, but inwardly moral corruption and spiritual adultery permeated the people. Moral corruption inwardly and spiritual adultery. In other words, adultery, which meant uh, they were worshiping idols. They entertained idols. They entertained demons. They um, sacrificed their children to Molech. They burned their children on the altar to false gods. They uh, followed after sexual gods, Astra, and, and uh, uh, other uh, gods, so-called gods and goddesses. The people of God turned their backs on God and made sex their God. They made money their God. They made prosperity their God. This was the 8th century 
B.C. when God called up preachers like uh, Hosea and, and uh, when God raised up Isaiah and many others to preach the word of God. And God's message is the same, whether it's Isaiah, whether it's Hosea, or whether it's Amos, God's message is repent, return unto me, repent, return unto me. And that message is the same, is the same message that all of you preach today. Repent and return unto me. God is saying in his word to us today in chapter 6, verse 1, the Lord is saying to us, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. This was Hosea's message. But you know what? Before a preacher can truly preach, hey, Dustina, before a preacher can truly preach, you've got to go through some stuff. You, hey, uh, uh, Melanie, you've got to go through some stuff. I mean, preachers got to go through some stuff. Prophets got to go through some stuff. Teachers got to go through some stuff. Members of the body of Christ, if you're going through some stuff right now, if you're meeting challenges, count it all joy, the Bible says, when you enter into diverse temptations. When you're going through stuff, I mean, when the Satan is kicking your butt, count it as joy and worship the Lord because beyond the stuff, when you get through the stuff, you're going to be strong in the Lord and powerful in his might. But you've got to stay strong in the Lord. You've got to take what the devil puts on you. You've got to endure. You can't cave in. You can't quit. And the problem is many have quit. Many quit in 2019. But God is saying, return unto me. You can start all over again, ladies and gentlemen. Get back up on your feet. If the devil knocked you down in 2019, you get back up on your feet in 2020. Shake off the dust. Uh, wipe the tears from your eyes. Uh, 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 make a determination. This is the year I return unto the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have been a backslider, if God could not count on you to be in church two different Sundays in succession, uh, you make the devil a liar and make a determination. I will not miss a service. I will not be miss being in the presence of the Lord. Make up the determination, ladies and gentlemen. I will get back into studying my word. I will get back into praying. I will get back to new knee bone station. I will get back to listening to the voice of the Lord. Make up a determination, ladies and gentlemen, that you're not going to just know about God, but you're going to know him. I'm going to get to know him. Kevin Wilson talks about, <clears throat> I want to be like Daniel. Well, many of us are going through this 21-day Daniel fast right now. We're going through a 21-day Daniel fast. We're fasting like Daniel. Well, Daniel had a reason to fast. Daniel needed to hear from the Lord. Daniel had some concerns about his nation. Daniel wanted to know what was going to go on with his nation. And so he committed a fast, and it took 21 days before the angel of the Lord came to Daniel with the answer. And Daniel, when he saw the angel, he said, I've been fasting and praying for 21 days. Why did it take you so long to get here? And the angel said, hey, let me tell you something. I had to fight the powers and principalities, the rule of spirits, spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. God heard you from the moment you committed your fast, from the moment you began to pray. But I, the angel of the Lord, had to fight through all these demonic spirits, the host of hell. I had to fight to get to you, to bring you your blessing. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't know what's going on in that spiritual realm. You don't know the warfare going on. And you can't know if you don't don't read your Bible. You can't know if you keep running every time trouble comes. Uh, uh, you've got to be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Hosea was called, and ladies and gentlemen, here's a man who uh, really, I mean, if, if you look at what he had to go through, you'll wonder how could he preach, how could he prophesy. Turn with me, Hosea uh, chapter chapter 3. Chapter 3, 
where God tells Hosea, Then said the Lord unto me, Go, yet love a woman, beloved her for her, of her friend, yet an adulteress, according to the love of the, Lord, of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who look to other gods and love flagons of wine. Well, that was a one message God gave to him. And then uh, God said to Hosea in the first chapter, and the Lord said um, to him in uh, verse 2, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. God told Hosea, go and marry a whore, a prostitute. I want you, man of God, to go and marry a prostitute. She does not have a good reputation. Everybody in town has had her. But I want you to go and marry her and uh, build her a house and, and, and raise a family with her. And Hosea obeyed the Lord. It pays to obey the Lord. But you know, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes God will send you to places you wish you hadn't gone. God will send you to places you'll say, how did I get here? You, he'll send you to places you'll say, what am I doing here? You'll sometimes say, well, God, where are you? God, you said for me to do this. You said, and now I'm catching hell from every angle. But Hosea <coughs> obeyed God, and he went and, and married a, a whore, a prostitute. And, and why did God ask Hosea to marry a prostitute, a whore? He said, because the nation has committed whoredom against me. They have committed adultery against me by entertaining and loving other gods. They are loving idols. Even the priests are loving idols. The priests are, permit, are participating in sex orgies. The priests are having sex with other men and with women. The priests are doing this. They have built groves on top of the of the temple. The priests have led the people into turning their back. And ladies and gentlemen, in this nation, we've got a lot of priests. They've been sleeping with the enemy. We've got a lot of priests that call themselves evangelicals. They're sleeping with the enemy. They have forgotten about the Bible. Now the Republican Party is their God. We've got some priests that are sleeping with the Democratic Party. They've forgotten about the Bible. Now the Democratic Party is their God. But ladies and gentlemen, God is not pleased. The nation has committed harlotry. We talk about God, but we don't know God. We talk about Jesus, but we don't do his word. God is looking for a people who will obey him, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm preaching today. God is looking for a people <coughs> who will obey him and will trust in his word and will do <coughs> the word of God. And so Hosea obeyed God. Man, I'm telling you, he went and married Gomer. She gave him three children. And then after that third child was born, she said, huh, 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 I'm out of here. Gomer said, I'm out of here. And she left Hosea with the three children and went back out on the block, went out on the streets, went out seeking her previous lovers. She said, I'm, hey, it was better for me when I was out here before. That at least they gave me food to eat. They gave me money. They gave me bracelets. They gave me jewelry. They gave me clothing. But this Hosea dude, he, he's a preacher. He ain't giving me nothing but, and, but, but a hard time. And she left him. Ladies and gentlemen, but that was all in God's plan. Sometimes you're going through stuff and you're wondering, why am I going through this stuff? Why is it hurting so bad? Why am I the laughing stock? Why am I going through this stuff? God's got the plan, ladies and gentlemen. You see, the preacher's message, the preacher's message was personal. It was personal. His message was just a microcosm of what the nation was doing. The whole nation was committing adultery against God, and God called idolatry adultery. 
running after false gods, seeking after uh, sexual gods, seeking after money gods, seeking after pleasure gods, doing those things that are contrary to the word of God, God calls this spiritual adultery. God says a nation has committed adultery unto me. And so uh, after Hosea gets his uh, indoctrination and gets his uh, experience being hurt and being beat down and being laughed at by the people, God sent him out. And there are a lot of you preachers out there. Uh, uh, you've been beat down. You've been em embarrassed. You've been humiliated. And people laughing at you, laughing at your ministry. But God called you and God is orchestrating everything. So you stay, stay steadfast. Stay immovable. I'm talking to somebody out there. And if you quit the ministry, you get back up where you belong. Just get back up. God knows what he's doing. A lot of the experiences we have, ladies and gentlemen, as preachers, pastors, uh, prophets, apostles, teachers, evangelists, a lot of our experiences are just um, uh, microcosms of what the whole nation is going through. And God is trying to reach the nation. God will put you in a personal set of experiences to be a witness to the whole nation, to be a witness to your community, to be a witness to your church. So if you've been knocked down, get back up. If you've been hurt, get back up. If people have deceived you, get back up. Forgive them. Repent. If you've turned your back to the Lord and say, I can't take it anymore, get back up. God said, return unto me. And Hosea began to preach the word of God, and God promised Hosea, that he would bring revival to the people. God promised Hosea that he was going, he was going to uh, humiliate the nation. God is a man that he should, God is not a man that he should lie. God will keep his word. And, and, and God used Hosea to bring the attention to the people that there was a need to repent. And because Israel, the twelve, the ten tribes to the north, refused to repent. They heard the word of God. They heard uh, uh, Hosea's messages. They heard Isaiah's messages. They heard many other messages. They refused to repent. And God's not going to do anything unless he sends the prophet with the word. They refused to hearken to the word of God. And in the year 721 B.C., in the 8th century, uh, during Hosea's lifetime, the Assyrians came and destroyed the ten tribes of Israel in the nation of Samaria or the, the, the northern kingdom. And then God said, well, perhaps it, Judah, perhaps Judah will hearken unto what I'm doing. And they would take the lesson that uh, they learned from Israel in the north. And 150 years later, ladies and gentlemen, 150 years later, Judah fell. Judah fell. God's people did not hearken to the word of God. They were determined to do their own thing. They kicked God out of their marriages, out of their homes, out of their communities, out of their nation. They turned their back on God. They de depended on their kings, their leaders, their presidents, rather than to depend on God. And the, the priests compromised. The priests were just as bad as the presidents. The priests uh, turned their backs on God. They had orgies with, with women, uh, with whores and prostitutes in the temple of God, ladies and gentlemen. And then God said, that's it. And in the year 587 B.C., God sent Nebuchadnezzar to destroy Jerusalem. Jeremiah uh, uh, was a witness when Nebuchadnezzar rolled through the uh, streets of Jerusalem and Jeremiah saw the destruction. And in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23, Jeremiah says, It is because of your mercies, Lord, that we are not consumed. It's because of your mercies, Lord, that we are not consumed. Your compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And even throughout all that destruction that Jeremiah witnessed, that Hosea preached that it's coming, Isaiah preached that it's coming, and many prophets preached destruction is coming. The people did not believe it, and Jeremiah was a witness, an eyewitness of that destruction. He saw the destruction 
of Jerusalem. And yet, even though many, many, many thousands of lives were destroyed, Jeremiah said, it is because of your mercies that we are not destroyed. Your compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. And in the time of trouble, Jeremiah magnified the Lord. And ladies and gentlemen, you and I, as we enter into 2020, we must recognize that some difficult days are ahead of us. And, and, and you've got to, got to be living in a, in a, a cornflakes box or, 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 or frosted flakes box if you can't see it coming. Ladies and gentlemen, do not be deceived by your political leaders who make you think that it's all the fault of this political party or it's all the fault of that political party. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have turned your back on God, if you have sat down on God, if you have stopped reading your Bible, if you have stopped praying, if you have stopped fellowshipping, repent. God said in his word, return unto me. Return unto me. Let us make 2020 the year that we return unto the Lord. Well, how can I return to the Lord, Pastor? I've backslidden. I've sinned against God. Where do I go? How do I begin? What shall I do? You can return unto the Lord today, my friend, this very moment. First of all, if you have not ever been saved, you can ask the Lord Jesus Christ to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to come into your heart and be your Savior, your Lord, your God, and your King. And he will do that. You'll be saved today, this very moment, this very hour. And if you are saved and you know that you know that you know that you're a backslider, you know that you're not right with God, you know that you've let yourself be deceived, you can repent. Repent means turn from your sinful ways. Ask God to forgive you and to have mercy. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we confess our sins before you. Forgive us of all of our sins. We have all sinned against you, every one of us. Father, we repent. Help us to turn from every sinful way. We declare in Jesus' name that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Now, Lord Jesus, be our Savior and Lord. God, I confess my sins before you. Create in me a clean heart. Renew a right spirit within me. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Give me a desire to return to you through studying my word, through praying to you, through receiving the Holy Ghost, and to doing the things that you have commanded me to do. And God, help me to forget those things that are behind and to stretch for those things which are ahead. And help me to press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus if, if you will pray something like that and mean it with your heart, God will bless you. He will set you free. Let us make 2020 the year of our return to the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. If you have any questions about this message or want prayer or want further uh, clarification, please give me a call, 770 559 nine seven one zero or uh, visit my website you, there's a page where you can contact us www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com or send me an email leroycarter69 at yahoo.com or text me that by cell 404-205-1101 praise God we're going to stop the, the recording and uh, stay on for a little time that we can chat and chew.